she said that she would cut, cut me up. And something about her, that she wasn't in the mental place to do that, but that she would get herself in that place to be able to do it. Death threats and guns. Stunning testimony today in day 21 of Lori Vallow Daybell's murder trial. Vallow was charged with murder and conspiracy to commit murder and the deaths of her two kids, JJ and Tylee, as well as her husband's late wife, Tammy Daybell. Our Shira Matsuzawa has a look at what happened at the Ada County Courthouse today. Court ended today with Ian Pulowski on the stand. He's the husband of Lori Vallow's niece, Melanie. Now, there was some question about whether he violated the exclusionary rule because his wife, Melanie, may have seen or heard previous testimony in this case. The court ruled that he didn't violate it and was able to testify. Ian's testimony started just about 15 minutes before court ended for the day. He described Melanie's relationship with Lori as close and very supportive. He said when Lori and Chad first shared their religious beliefs with him, he was open to it, but that quickly changed. He said the day after he married Melanie, she dumped his fears on him. He got concerned, went to police, and recorded conversations with Chad and Lori, but they never confessed to a crime. Today, Audrey Baratario also testified she stopped being friends with Lori after Lori threatened to kill her. She says Lori called her naive and trusting and that she would cut her up and bury her in a place where no one would find her. The defense then questioned Audrey and reminded her that she was under oath to tell the truth and that she never said any of this in the grand jury proceedings. Vallow's attorney, Jim Archibald, then said, quote, you want the jury to believe that you didn't make this last crap up? To which she replied, I did not make it up. Before that moment, though, Audrey talked about how she stayed with Lori and attended religious conferences together on occasion. She says when Lori started talking about zombies and people being possessed by spirits, it came out of nowhere. She said after a conference they attended in the summer of 2019, they went back to Lori's hotel and Lori talked about wanting to get an evil spirit out of her then husband, Charles Vallow. Audrey says everyone held hands and performed what's known as a casting to remove the spirit from Charles. Audrey told the court she felt uncomfortable. Charles died in July of 2019. Lori's brother, Alex Cox, shot and killed him in what he claimed at the time was self-defense. In October of 2019, Lori and her niece Melanie Boudreau, now Pulowski, visited Audrey in Missouri. During that trip, Audrey says Lori brought up the idea of working on Tammy because she now had a spirit that needed to be taken out. Later that month, Audrey met up with Lori and her niece Melanie in Hawaii. That's when Audrey says Lori told her Tammy died. As we've reported, Tammy died on October 19th of 2019. Extreme religious beliefs have been an integrated part of this case, and I caught up with Leah Satilli previously to talk about those beliefs. She's the author of the book, When the Moon Turns to Blood, but she's also a journalist who reports on political and religious extremism in the West. Lori and Chad had a, a tight community of people around them who, who were entertaining these ideas of light and dark spirits and zombies and people transforming into another person that could then be eliminated. I think that the Lori Vallow and Chad Daybell case is an example of what happens when extreme belief starts mainstreaming. Um, you know, even though they held these really fringe beliefs, you know, they weren't wearing camo and carrying an AR-15 at the Capitol and sort of wearing these costumes that we recognize as maybe sort of extreme. These are people who were, you know, going to yoga classes and were, you know, members of their, of their local LDS ward. So I think that it, it, it's a little bit of a wake up call for everyone to really look at like when people start talking about beliefs that are religious, that are extreme, that maybe we all need to pay a little bit closer attention to, to what the wider implications of those could be. Sergeant Vincent Kayakamanu with the Fremont County Sheriff's Office also testified that one of the guns belonging to Alex Cox could have been mistaken as a paint gun, which is important to note since Tammy reported a man attempted to shoot her with a paintball gun in October of 2019, just 10 days before she died. Today, the jury saw that assault rifle up close. And court will resume tomorrow morning with Ian back on the stand. At the Ada County Courthouse, Shira Matsuzawa, Idaho's News Channel 7. Looking forward to listening to some recordings that are probably going to be played. For a comprehensive breakdown of testimony in court today, you can head over to our website, ktvb.com. Also, don't forget, a new episode of Inside the Courtroom is going to be available this evening on KTVB Plus for your Roku or Amazon Fire Stick, as well as on our KTVB YouTube page.